Hello, I'm Jeremy, and welcome to Refresh, where I love to produce content that will refresh your spirit, refresh your mind, and refresh your vision. It was a cool evening at the end of January. I was still getting used to a new city, a new rhythm, and a new college. I'd been at the school for about a month, and I was falling into a regular routine. I made my way that Sunday night to the front row of the balcony in a large church auditorium. I liked it there. It was my usual spot. The main floor below me was packed with people, because tonight there was going to be a special speaker. I had never heard of him before, but obviously he'd made quite an impression the last time he was in the church. The worship time was shorter that night in order to give him all the time that he needed to share. The moment he opened his mouth, I was captivated. It was the passion that came from deep within him that drew my attention. There was a vitality. His words carried a weight I had rarely felt before. I was used to hearing great preachers. My dad is still one of the best preachers I've ever known. Some of the teachers and professors at our Bible college were much sought after speakers across North America and around the world. But there was something that resonated so strongly in my spirit that night that I will never forget it. He spoke of miracles that changed nations. He spoke of being kidnapped, of being presented for execution. He shared how God had prepared him three days earlier and how God had delivered him, how God had turned the hearts of his captors to Jesus. He shared that every morning when he got ready to go, he would kiss his wife and baby daughter goodbye as though it was the last time, because it just might be. There is a weight of God's glory. There is a depth of unrestrained humility that you feel when you are in the presence of those who have suffered for the gospel. There is something indescribably other about their understanding of who God is, who they are, and the world-changing power of the hope that is Jesus that we carry. I have since been in the presence of many individuals who've experienced suffering. They seem to displace gravity when they step into the room. There is a majesty that they carry that makes you feel insignificant in the grand scope of things. You feel as though you should fall to your knees as they come into the room, and at the same moment, you know that if you did, it would defile something holy. If I felt it today, I would know what it was, but that Sunday night, for the first time, I consciously heard the voice of of a martyr. I learned something that night about the value of my salvation. I knew what it was like to hear Peter, to listen to John, who saw vividly displayed on the cross what their salvation cost them. I now knew why the night they returned from prison, having been beaten and told not to preach in the name of Jesus, they determined to do so anyway. That night, I was challenged. How much was my salvation worth to me? I had been a Christian since I was six, but for the first time, I understood the true value of what grace cost heaven. I understood what grace, what the true love demands of us. Not the harsh demand of a dictator, but the powerful, loving response of a gift far beyond our ability repaid. And I was ruined. Something shifted for me that night. I gained a glimpse of eternity. Pursuing my own ab ambitions seemed so hollow, so empty. My salvation moved from being a right to an overwhelming treasure. Many times we lose sight of the value of our salvation. The longer we follow Jesus, the less wondrous grace can become. We take it for granted. We become familiar with it. In North America, where I live, it doesn't really cost us anything to be a Jesus follower. There's no price to pay, so we don't see the value of the grace that we've received. I don't know about you, but there are times when I need a refresh. I need to stop and consider the inestimable grace that has been given to us. I need to allow God to restore the passion of my first encounter. I need to revel in the great love that set me free and is truly the hope of the world. My prayer for me and for you is that God would open our eyes, open our hearts, open our lives to the true value of what we carry, that we would become consumed with the ardent adoration for the God who rescued us, that we would count the cost and find it nothing compared to the treasure we now own, that we would be willing to spend everything to see the hope we know shared with those whose dark lives lack the meaning they hunger for, that we would become blazing beacons to the hope that is Jesus. This is my last video for this season. Keep an eye out for the Christmas special in December. If you don't want to miss it, make sure that you subscribe and click the notification bell. 
Until then, keep looking upwards and keep moving onwards, and I'll see you in the next video.